sure to cook. Today we're going to be doing meatball subs. We're going to do everything homemade. Then I'm going to add a little Creole seasoning inside of here. I'm going to give this a great stir. Look at that guys, I am good to go. I hear you. Yes. Oh my God, that is wonderful. So, that was about four to five. I'm back. Welcome back to another episode of Be Sure to Cook. Today, we're going to be making something everybody's making, everybody's talking about, but we're going to be making it the Be Sure way. We're making cabbage soup. So stay tuned and let's do this. Okay, we have lots of different vegetables. Cabbage soup comes with whatever you want to put into your cabbage soup. So, we're going to be working with celery, carrots, onions, potatoes, of course the cabbage, and some other great things that we're going to be putting in, and garlic. So, we're going to be cutting up some of these vegetables. We're going to put our, our cabbage to the side because this is going to be the last thing that we cut up in small pieces, and we're going to rinse this off very good. But we have so many different vegetables that we're going to put in here to make this soup. But before we start off, we're going to need a good stock, a good soup stock to make our cabbage soup. So we're going to be using also some chicken. I've got two chicken thighs here that I'm going to put in a pot and show you everything that I'm going to put in here. And we're going to cook this until this chicken is tender, breaks up. We're going to devein it and we're going to use little pieces of chicken to put into our soup. Some people just put nothing but vegetables. Some people want a little meat because they still want that protein. But we, we're going to use chicken to make our stock base. So let's get started. Okay, here's my pot it has been rinsed and washed out thoroughly. I'm putting these big thick thighs in here. And these are pretty big thighs. And as you see, and I'm leaving the skin and, uh, and I washed them and rinsed them and the fat on there. I want that. I'm not going to be using that, but I want that for the great stock that this is going to bring for us. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. Let me clean up this mess and I'll be right back. Okay, we're... okay I got some garlic and uh, I might not even use all of these garlic. I got four cloves just in case. But I'm going to open up two for right now, and I'm going to cut two. So I'm taking them off the ends. I'm cutting both of the ends and getting rid of all those tough ends because uh, I always just trim up my garlic. Okay, I've rinsed off my garlic. Put that to the side. I've got me a little paper towel here. I'm going to dry off my garlic and whatever water drippings is on my cooking board. And... Oh, let's go ahead and start to get away. That was just one. Uh, I'm glad I did rinse it off because that's the skin that was left on there after the rinse. And I'm just going to go ahead and chop these up. Or you can put these in a food processor. But I want to, sometimes I like to chop them up really thin on my board or a little chunky. Because I want that taste of the garlic then into my soup. Okay, I've rinsed some of the celery off, but I'm going to put this and rinse this again. Now I'm just kind of like, because it had a little, a lot of, you know, dirt on that celery. So I'm going to rinse, wash these off twice and I'm going to clean these up. So I'm just going to clean up this celery. See, it's got a lot of, a lot of imperfections on it that I don't like. And I'm just going to take a knife and I'm just going to go down on here <laughs> let me cut that and I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to rinse these off again 
and then these here I'm going to chop up into small dices size dices okay like sticks and this is actually going to stay in the soup giving the soup a nice chunky flavor of celery You know not too big not too small but just a nice where you can see the celery we're we'll just run our knife over over these vegetables again okay I have a big giant carrot which this carrot is the biggest carrot I can get well I found I go to this store here where I live and they have it's a store for where you it's well it's an asian store that i go to and they got the best carrots ever and so i have gotten this carrot and it's a big carrot oh my god but these carrots are so sweet and they're delicious and um i go to this asian store and they got the best carrots and they're awful big look how big this carrot is but i'm only going to use half of this carrot not all of it okay so i'm gonna hold down now to everyone when you're messing with uh, a carrot and you're doing it fresh you want to make sure you what you watch your hand not wash watch your hand because you can easily cut your hand and believe me it's happens to it happened to me many a times so I'm just kind of like going to go cut straight into it and I'm getting like pieces. But if you feel like it's not safe for you, don't do it. Throw this bad boy into a food processor and <laughs> chop it up the best way you can to get those wonderful uh, square blocks. But like I said, I'm always into one thing I am into, guys, is to cutting my vegetables and working with the knife. I just, I love it. Okay, so I've got these, and I'm just going to chop these. Okay, so here they are, my diced, diced up carrots, because don't forget, you it is a soup. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can put mushrooms in here if you want. It depends on what you want to. And I love mushrooms. Those are my favorite. I do not have any for the soup because I want to make, I'm making a different type of soup. But I can make it with mushrooms also. So let's rinse off our carrots again. Okay, now you see my board is a little orange, which we wiped it off and cleaned off. I'm going to have to bleach this white, but that's no problem. I can still cook with this until I finish all my stuff. Let's do a little recap here. We have our diced carrots. We have our wedge uh, celery for our chicken to cook in. We have our bite-sized uh, celery for our chicken soup i mean for our soup that we're going to make and this is a celery leaf that we're going to be cutting up and then we also done the garlic and now the next thing we got to do is we're got to do an onion here we've got to go ahead and we got to chop up onion so this is a yellow onion usually i do a lot of white onions yellow onions purple onions i just work with all kinds but today i'm using a good old yellow onion which it goes great in soups too. You can use any type of onion you want to use in your soup. You can even use a purple onion if you want, a shallot, you know, whatever onion turns you on it that you like or you prefer to go in your soup. Oh, it was trying to get away. You see it running away from me? That onion was trying to get out of here. It did not want to go into this cabbage soup. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I put it. Sometimes you'll see this pill here where it looks like it's turning into the paper that we took off most likely it is a lot of people don't know this but this pill and i just want to get this back for you this right here actually is 
this onion. What it does is it sits on there and it turns. I've seen some people wash this and rinse this off. I know it sounds crazy. It actually put this in stews. And as long as they rinse it off and put it in stews and stuff, it cooks just like an onion it, 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 because it is an onion. This is the onion that we look for inside. We peel this off, but it's good to peel it off sometimes because this is what lays on the ground. But if it's got more than one, you'll find that first piece that looks like this, and you'll find that second piece that looks like this. The second piece, I say, yeah, do it. And if you want to use the first piece, you can. After I rinse and wash these off, I put these in a bowl. I'm going to set this to the side. Now, some unusual thing, I'm going to put corn. And usually, I rinse this off here, and I'm going to dry this off with a small paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to dry this off with the towel because I washed off my cans. Uh, some people don't do that, but I do because I want to make sure, you know, sometimes, you you know, you got that big warehouse where they're packaging up everything. They, you know, rodents and stuff smell, you know, food and they, they get in somehow and sometimes they walk all over the, you know, vegetables and leave droppings on there. So I make sure I really wash mine off very well before I penetrate going into the can and grabbing anything. So then I wash off with a towel. So a lot of people do do that, but that's why I did that. Just in case everybody want to know, why should you wash off our can? Okay, the can that I'm open is a can of corn. But you can do it yourself by, but it's a can of, ta -da! Mexican corn. Yes, that's what it is. You can make this can, uh, not can, you can make this yourself. All you have to do is get some corn on the cob, rinse off your corn on the cob. You want to take a knife, go Shave that corn right off. Rinse that corn very good. Cut up you some red bell peppers, some green bell peppers, some onions. Put whatever you want inside of that. You want to put you some oil. I use vegetable oil and parts butter, but I use a healthy heart butter that I also use. And I mix those two together and I will take some garlic, throw it in there. Put uh, my vegetables in there first and get those nice and sauteed adding my corn flopping around you can add whatever you want on it but this I'm not doing any of this I am draining uh oh I thought I was yeah I'm draining all this corn <laughs> and it did it for me so I got a can just a small can of Mexican corn okay since we did that we drained the corn we also drained the tomatoes Last but not least, we have the star of the dish. It is the cabbage. So I'm going to start peeling off the outer layer of the cabbages. Oop, uh, look at that. I found something that I do not like. That is getting cut off. All of that. Yes. I'm going to discard that. So I'm just going to take... Cutting this cabbage down the middle. I only need a little bit of the cabbage. And I'll take this other half. And I'm going to throw that into the refrigerator. While I'm going to take these other pieces that I cut off. And I'm going to disregard that. And I'm cutting out the core, guys. And I just do a cut down and then take that out. And I'm cutting down the core. Some people do use these outer layers. Uh, I don't. <laughs> a lot of people do because they think that's the most nutritious, which it probably is, but I don't. Okay, so uh, that's where I cut out the core. I am going to chop this in a smaller section of cabbage, and I'm going to square these like so. And then this, I want, I want them to be like square, kind of like. So I'm going to take one at a time, and then I'm going to cut. I want smaller cabbages. I don't want really big ones because I'm making a, a soup. So, and I might need more of the cabbage. That's okay. Okay. And I'll make sure that each one of these are cut properly. Cutting down on the cabbage. 
making small squares. And if you do get some big ones, all you got to do is just kind of like rip it to the point where you want those. Okay. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually take the cabbage apart, making each little square, you know, where there's not a whole bunch of them all together. So it would take me a minute to do this. But okay, as I fully put this and submerge this into water and rinse in every little thing, I am going to let this drain into another pot top. It's the thing that I washed it in. And I put this on top and it sits on top and it just drains all the water. Look how the water it collected so far. So that's pretty good and it's still collecting water. And I'm just going to keep shaking this until I get water. We don't need a lot of water in here because we're going to have broth. But it's going to make its own water anyway. But let's get out all the, you know, the extra water that we don't need. Okay, we're about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes in. And I'm going to check my chicken, checking for its doneness. And it's not quite what I want it because it's still kind of like firm. And I'm just going to take my chicken and go around the pot here, getting all the, the good stuff back in there because, uh, yeah, I check for celery. It's still a little tender. Okay, let's go on another 15 or more 20 minutes. I say about Chicken takes about 35 to 45 minutes cooking. And look at that rich broth that it made. That's what I'm looking for. So that's all the good stuff. We're going to strain all this broth also, guys. And as we strain this, we're going to try to get see all that fat on top of that. We're going to get rid of majority of that fat because we just want that great broth. We don't want the, the fat. We want to leave a little bit, but we want, don't want to leave a lot because... That's not really good healthy fat. So we're going to like skim some of that fat out, majority of all that fat out, or all of it, and keeping that good rich broth at the, in, in the bottom of that. Okay, guys, I have one of my small bowls out, and we're about to check this chicken. It's been another 25 minutes. I know it's been 25 minutes because I've been back there watching the game. Okay, I am a Vikings fan, but my second team, the Vikings doesn't come in, is Kansas City. Uh, I just like that Mahomes little boy. He reminds me of my grandson. So. <laughs> but my, if it comes up to the Vikings in Kansas City, the Vikings will always be my pick, and I would never go with Kansas City. Okay, but while they're not in right now, I'm going for them. Okay, this is my chicken. And it is completely done. Actually, if it cooks any more, it is going to go off, come apart and go off the bone and have everything everywhere. We don't want that. So, as you know, I'm draining this as much as I can. And the rest of it that will set here and cool, see how that's coming apart? Chicken's already coming off. The rest of it is going to cool. But as you see, can you see my juice? And I, can you see where all the fat is on top? Okay, we're going to strain this in my fat strainer. Then I'm pouring the liquid, leaving leaving the fat at the bottom. Uh-oh. Okay, starting to get a little fat there, see? As a matter of fact, that is a... Okay, the bottom of this is what I want. Oh, that's all the good stuff that I'm leaving in there. Okay, guys, this is my broth that I separated the fat. I have a little shimmers of still a little fat in there, but not a whole bowl of it. It is all in here. All this fat is down into this bowl. That's a lot of fat. Okay, but we're going to use a little bit of that fat. And we're going to take this pot that we have, the same pot. We're not going to rinse it because this is all the great flavors that we still have in there. And we're going to put it back on the stove using a little of the fat because we're going to need that fat to saute our vegetables. So come on over. Okay, I left that bay leaf in there. And here's some of that fat. I'm pouring back in there just a little bit of that, a tiny little bit, because they're going to soak all up with those vegetables. 
And that's my bay leaf. I'm putting that to the side because I'm going to need that bay leaf. Okay, I've got that cooking and boiling out all of that water, I mean juice, and I'm adding those wonderful carrots in there. Oh, and then I'm adding some celery. Not too much of the celery because I don't like a lot of celery. I got celery leaf in there. In there also, I'm going to chop up. And then guess what, guys? We got that garlic. Remember that garlic that we were going to put in there? We're going to use all that garlic in there. That gives it great flavor. Got to do something with that garlic. And we're going to just toss the garlic and the celery and the onion. Put some of that onion in there. The onion. And we're just tossing all of this together. Because this is the soup. All this is going to cook down. And while I'm sitting here and, and doing this, because I want to really kind of cook, might as well go ahead and use all that little celery. Because guess what? Uh, it has to go somewhere. I have nowhere else to use it. And um, I'm going to cook this up. And I want to saute that. We're going to add some seasonings into these vegetables. We're going to add some fresh smoked paprika to give it that nice color flavor and some Mrs. Dash to these vegetables. Okay. I'm going to season up this again. Then we're going to add a little bit of kosher salt to these and let these sweat out a little. Make these a little soft because they're also going to go into the juice also after we put all of our good stuff in. Let's go ahead and get that. This is kosher salt. See how big that is? I'm just taking a pinch of this kosher salt, and that's all I need. I don't need all of that. I'm putting it back into the jar. I don't need that kosher, all that kosher salt because things are already salty. And I'm just going to sweat these all out. Okay, I'm, salt, I'm still cooking down these vegetables a little bit, getting them nice and sauteed. I got a little Mama Sita's mix here that I got. And this is something that I decided to use and put in here. It makes my broth taste so good. I also use this when I made a dumpling. You know, when I made my Chinese dumpling. So you can also get that on that show. If you go to my Chinese dumplings, they tell you exactly what this is. Same season mix that I'm using. It gives a little great flavor to that. And that's just my little secret that I put in here and vegetable mm, great flavor guys I use about a tablespoon of that as that's cooking down I'm going to add remember those tomatoes that I drained and I put in there okay I'm going to add that to the mix get in there make everything happy they're screaming they're talking to each other right now they think this is a great mix to put in there and I'm going to make sure I'm just everything diet quiet down and died down like okay we're not talking anymore because they're happy let's get that in there and let's get that that working and let's keep on in the meantime I've got some celery leaf okay and I just happen to love using the celery leaf celery leaf is good it gives it a it gives it a, a good look to that. And so I rinsed this off earlier with all of my celery. And I'm just going to add this celery leaf right on into my pot here. Okay. I'm going to add the rest of that into my pot. Great celery leaf. Gives it a great flavor. And it gives it a good appearance. So I do like that. And don't forget, guys, we got that Mexican corn that we need to add in there. Right, that Mexican corn is going to be the bomb in here. Wonderful. This is all just going to cook really good, and the corn and the tomatoes, and all of this is going to cook very well. There we go. The last thing I am going to add into this dish that I would think that I would need to add in 
is going to be uh, the cabbage because cabbage cooks so you know well and so you know cooks so fast that is the the, the only thing that I'm going to add later. Okay, our next thing that's going to take a while to cook, because I want this to take a while to cook, we're going to get our potatoes. Okay, so we got our potatoes that are going in, and they're, they are raw. I'm going to have to do a quick cleaning up, and I'm going to just toss these all around to get that potatoes in there, mm, get all of that. And then now, we're going to turn this up on a medium. And we're going to let this cook. And we're going to be adding uh, our, our broth in here next. Okay, go back in that bay leaf that was with that chicken. Get that in there. I've got that going now. I went ahead and add the rest of that pack of Mama Sita's in there. Okay, here's come that juice. We're adding all of that juice back in there. We took all that fat out and we're gonna cook that because those potatoes guys have to cook. Okay, the chicken I have cooled down and I'm just taking my knife and I'm kind of like cutting them in like little squares. I cut this, I already diced this up and I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm just going to cut down the chicken. You know, these right here is still the chicken. This is the oyster. The oyster is always tender. But these are more of the stringy pieces, and I don't want that. So this is my chicken. I'm going to put it into this little bowl. This is going to go right into... But now, let's go and check it out. How our soup is doing and cooking. All right, guys. This is my soups have cooked down, and I'm trying. Everything looks good and brothy. Look at that. Looks really good. I'm getting the potato, and it is fork tender. Very, very fork tender. And my vegetables are all cooked down. You got that glazy look. It is done. My tomatoes are cooked down, but we're still not finished. We're still cooking this soup. The next thing we're going to do is add in our cabbage. So here we go. All right. Now I'm, this cabbage, I'm putting this cabbage in and I want this cabbage to suck up all the broth and all the juice that is in here and cook down. So this is the star of the whole dish. It is cabbage soup. So this is a star. This is what shines. And this is what we need to gather it all up and we take our all our vegetables that was in there and we're just going to smash all this down in here and let it continue to boil and cook and and, and this cabbage will make even extra juice so cabbage makes water and if it's in juice or water it's just gonna double fold that so this is going to be more for when it starts cooking. So as long as I submerge this into that delicious, look at that, look at that juice. Delicious juice with all the other stuff, then we'll stir it. But right now, we need the top on this bed boy because we don't need to lose any more juice. We need to make juice and make this very happy soup. Okay, guys, we are done here. This is my cabbage soup. And it is so flavorful and so good. And look at those potatoes, those carrots, all those ingredients I put in there. And the broth is spectacular. But right now, we have our bowl here where we're going to plate this. Now, it's cabbage soup. So I, the star of this soup is cabbage and, you know, the vegetables and all. A lot of people, it's a detox soup, what they call it. A lot of people just eat it like this. A lot of people like meat because they still want to get that protein. Some people eat this for like a week or two weeks. Um, I know I have a cousin that asked me to make this dish. So I made this in, in honor to her. And I'm going to bring her over some to see if she likes this one. There's different many ways that you can make this soup. With different many vegetables. Some people put green beans, which, you know, I like green beans too. 
But I wanted to make a simple soup to show them that you can make a simple soup with uh, tomatoes, carrots, potatoes, and all kind of great stuff. But you got it. You, you can use okra. You can use whatever you want to put in your soup. But this is the be surest way to cook the soup. Now, some people use like uh, shredded chicken would be good. You know, you can use a shredded breast chicken. But I use thighs because I cooked them because I wanted to get the the flavor of the broth to be very flavorful. And the stuff that I put in there made it so good, so rich, so good. So the chicken, I didn't want to waste it. So I cut up the chicken and gave uh, little cubes of chicken. But this chicken is actually a thigh. And I use thighs for the broth. You could take a little bit of the thigh chicken. And you could put a little bit at the bottom of your bowl. Because this is not about the meat. It's all about just the vegetables. Let's just say we put a little bit in here. And then we're going to go ahead and let me cover up the rest of the chicken. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our soup. And here it is. Look at this, guys. Look at all of these vegetables. Look at the, oh my God, look at all the cabbage. We're just going to place this right into our bowl. Oh my God, guys, this is so good. This is the soup. This is the soup that we're looking for. Oh, look at that. Good old broth, good old soup. Look at that. This, here you go. Cabbage soup with chicken. You can use chicken sausage. You can use any kind of meat. Or you don't have to use none at all. But if you want some protein, put some chicken at the bottom. And make sure it's a lean chicken, not a lot of fat. And we don't have a lot of fat in this. And this is so good. Eat it for a week. Eat it for a week. Oh, my spoon dropped. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, that was a mistake. I was swinging my hands and I accidentally hit and hit my spoon, landed on the floor. But this soup is delicious. Try it. This is Be Sure to Cook's Way. Hey, please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Come back so we can make plenty more dishes. Because guess what? We didn't do this dish alone. I didn't. You helped me. You and me. We did this together. And we're going to continue to do great dishes. Hey, guys, come back next time. See you next time. Bye.